Good morning, all. I promised you a final update on my winter sewing experiment this year. So today, that's what I'm going to share. Now, as a reminder, I started an assortment of cool season veggies and herbs via the winter sewing method back on February 2nd. And for reference, I am in Ohio with a last estimated spring frost date of right around May 10th. Here's a quick recap of the process, but for more detail on the winter sewing method, be sure to check out the video linked above. I started by poking drainage holes in the bottom of clean milk jugs. I cut openings in the containers about half of the way up, leaving a small hinge, and I removed the lids. I filled the milk jugs with potting soil, moistened the soil, and sowed my seeds. Then I refastened the top portion of the containers with duct tape and placed the containers in a sunny, protected location outdoors. Now by the middle of March, almost all of the seeds that I planted were sprouted, with the exception of some onion seed, which was old and I knew going into it probably wouldn't sprout. I got a little nervous because after they sprouted, we dipped back into extremely cold temperatures for our area. So we had one low right around 17 degrees Fahrenheit and several other nights in the low 20s. At one point, I actually covered half of my jugs with a sheet and left the other half uncovered just to test out whether they'd make it through that extreme cold, but they all did fine, even the group that was uncovered. So that milk jug does provide enough of a greenhouse environment for those tiny little seeds. As the weather got consistently above freezing, I completely removed the tops of the jugs, and by the middle to the end of April, almost everything was ready for transplanting into the garden. For the sake of comparison, I also started a batch of all the same vegetables and herbs using my traditional method, which is sowing indoors under grow lights in mid-February, specifically on February 16th of this year. It is now the beginning of August and all of my winter sown vegetables and herbs have been harvested or I'm getting ready to harvest today with the exception of the celery. Now the celery was so slow to take off that I never did end up planting it. It is actually still sitting in its milk jug container, and I'm debating planting it out now for a potential fall harvest. But let me show you how the rest of the winter sowings did and how they compared to their indoor sown counterparts. But first, a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Lomi. Lomi is a revolutionary kitchen appliance that can be used in all kitchens, even a camper kitchen when your real kitchen is in a state of complete disaster from a remodel that turns waste of all sorts. So food waste, lawn waste, garden waste, Lomi approved packaging, coffee grounds, oh, so many coffee grounds into dirt. Dirt that can then be added back into my garden, mixed into containers, or even added to the containers that I do my winter sewing in. Now, today is clean out the fridge day, so I'm going to be feeding all kinds of green some science experiment wannabes to the Lomi. We've got my leftovers from making pickles and breakfast, the blueberries that have gone bad, the poor sad half a bagel that I'm pretty sure is growing some form of penicillin. I'm not even sure what that used to be. And so many coffee grounds. I'm running this on grow mode, so I'm gonna add one of these Lomi pods, which add beneficial microbes to my finished dirt. Press the button and we'll check back on this in the morning. And voila, dirt. I've got some really sad house plants that could desperately use this, or I might use it to side dress some of the carrots or beets I've got planted for fall harvest. The applications are almost endless. And if you are interested in trying out Lomi for yourself, be sure to click on the link in the video description below. Now, back to those winter sowing results. For the sake of kicking it off on a positive note, I'm gonna share the successes with you or the quasi successes first. A major pleasant surprise was the broccoli. This year I compared gypsy broccoli. The winter sown plants were started February 2nd, transplanted April 29th, and harvested June 13th. The indoor sown batch was started February 16th, transplanted April 11th, and I harvested the main head on May 23rd, with side shoot production harvestable by June 6th. 
Now, although the indoor sown broccoli was harvested earlier, I count the winter sown as a success because that later harvest may have actually benefited the broccoli this year. We had a tricky spring and it went from very, very cold and wet to very, very hot and dry in a matter of a couple of weeks. And a lot of my brassicas suffered for it. So all of my indoor sown broccoli that was maturing right around the end of May was really dealing with some stressful hot temperatures. I got a harvest off of everything, but it wasn't optimal. So my heads were a little smaller than normal. And some of them even wanted to start buttoning or bolting sooner than they normally would. Well, about the time that winter sown broccoli was maturing, the temperatures had cooled down just a little bit. So that winter sown head of gypsy broccoli actually ended up being much nicer than the stuff that I harvested earlier. Now that isn't going to be the case every year, but it did work out well this year. Another win was this Verde de Taglio chard. Again, winter sown on February 2nd, transplanted April 29th, and harvestable by June 7th. My indoor sown chard was started February 16th, transplanted April 11th, and harvestable by May 20th. Now the winter sown plants did lag behind the indoor sown plants pretty significantly until almost the end of June. But after that point, I honestly really couldn't tell the difference between the two. So again, a few weeks difference in harvest time with the winter sown group being a bit later, but ultimately, I end up with a nice, healthy plant either way. Much like the chard, the winter sown kale lagged behind the indoor sown till about the end of June. But I cannot tell the difference between the two sets of plants now. So behind me is my winter sown kale, again, started on February 2nd, transplanted April 29th, and harvestable by June 7th, compared to my indoor sown kale, which was started February 16th, transplanted April 5th, and harvestable by May 25th. My German chamomile was another big win, but this one did something really unusual that I have not figured out a way to explain yet. So my winter sown batch was started February 2nd, transplanted out April 29th, and was flowering by June 2nd. My indoor batch was started February 13th, transplanted April 11th, and was flowering by June 10th. So the indoor sown group actually started flowering later. And here's the really interesting part. The winter sown plants stayed much more compact. They had a nicer habit. They didn't get all lanky and weedy looking as compared to the indoor sown plants, which did. Now these were the same batches of seed, both German chamomile. And like I said, I don't have a great explanation for this. I've never experienced a plant actually having a completely different growth habit based on how the seed was started. So if anybody has any theories as to how that happened, definitely let me know. And a final maybe win is my cabbage. This is my winter sown batch started on February 2nd, transplanted April 29th, and harvestable by around July 28th. My indoor batch was started February 16th, transplanted April 11th, and harvested by July 11th. Now I'm qualifying this as a win because I did get harvestable heads off of these winter sown plants. This is quite a bit later than I'd like to be harvesting cabbage, but the quality seems okay. Now these would be in a lot better shape if it weren't for an error on my part. I took the insect netting off and did not keep up on my BT spray for cabbage worms. So a lot of this ugliness that you see on these cabbages is simply from cabbage worm feeding damage. But the cabbage heads themselves, there's nothing wrong with them. Now, as a comparison, I did actually leave one of my indoor sown cabbages out here. I haven't harvested yet, so let me show you what this one looks like. So quite a bit of feeding damage on this guy too, but this also should have been harvested weeks ago. But I ended up with full-size cabbage heads either way, so I'm counting it as a win. Now I had one plant that I would consider a draw in terms of success, and this was my cauliflower. Given that I thought for sure I wouldn't get any kind of a head, I'm actually amazed that I got something off of this plant. And full disclosure, I actually sowed two different varieties of cauliflower, so it was not a true absolute test, but they are varieties from the same breeding program with relatively similar maturity windows. My winter sown cauliflower was a variety called Goodman. And I started that February 2nd, transplanted April 
April 29th and probably would have been mature about July 20th. I just held off too long on harvesting it. My indoor sown variety was one called Aerospace and it was started indoors on February 16th, transplanted April 11th and mature June 13th. Now, like I said, I did get ahead off of the winter sown plant, which I wasn't even expecting that. But I'm not qualifying this as a straight out win because the quality of that head definitely suffered with the heat of the later season harvest. It was not nearly as nice as any of the cauliflower that I harvested back in June. The other thing that I have concern with is that had I planted a less resilient, vigorous, stress tolerant variety, I'm not even sure that the cauliflower would have fared this well. So I will say that cauliflower is one that I don't recommend as a winter sown. For me, it definitely works better as an indoor start. And now the failures. This may be my biggest disappointment of the batch. This is green glaze collards, and this is the plant that very early on in the winter sowing, I thought showed the most promise. It was a vigorous seedling, very, very healthy, looked really good. I winter sowed this on February 2nd and transplanted April 29th. But after transplanting, these plants almost immediately bolted. Now, I'm sure that some of that had to do with the weather, but collards are typically a really resilient plant. So I was extra surprised by the fact that the collards bolted and not some of my other things. Now compare this to my indoor sown plants. Again, started February 16th, transplanted April 4th, and harvestable by May 25th. These are, yes, eaten up by cabbage worms, but they've not bolted and they're still harvestable. As with how my collards typically perform, I'll be able to harvest these clear up until after the frost. So this one was a big bummer. Plymouth spinach was another veggie that I was really excited about and then it fizzled. Like the collards, the winter sown plants looked really, really nice and healthy in the beginning and I thought they were gonna do great. From that February 2nd winter sown date, they were transplantable on April 21st. But I didn't even get a harvest at all. Just like the collards, the spinach went straight to bolting. Now, in a longer, cooler spring, I think I would have had totally different results. My indoor sown spinach was started February 16th, transplanted March 5th, and I got a nice harvest by May 5th on those. Now, a couple of tweaks that I think would have helped the winter sown spinach. First of all, in general, I have much better luck with spinach sown in a cold frame and left to grow in place. I think that would have been a better method than the actual winter sowing in jugs for spinach specifically. The other thing that might have helped save the winter sown plants was had I transplanted at a smaller size. I kept holding off, waiting for them to get bigger and more established before transplanting because that's what I do with my indoor sown plants. But I think waiting as long as I did actually put more stress on them than had I transplanted when they were smaller. And my results with the arugula was almost identical to the spinach. I started a variety called Balboa arugula. It did the same thing, went straight to bolting. I never got a harvest off of it at all. And much like my spinach, I think either sowing in a cold frame or transplanting the plants at a much smaller size would have given me better winter sowing results. And finally, that celery that I mentioned. This is a variety called Kelvin. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the only winter sown plant that I did not transplant out into the garden. These seedlings were extremely slow to take off. And while they've looked healthy pretty much the entire time, by the time they were big enough to transplant, it was so hot already that I just didn't feel like it would be worth the effort. Celery doesn't love the heat, especially if you're just trying to get it established during periods of really, really hot weather. So like I mentioned earlier, Earlier, I may transplant this out yet, but I want to show you guys the indoor sown comparison. These were started indoors on February 16th, transplanted April 22nd, and harvestable by June 23rd. So that's what my indoor celery is looking like right now. And side note, if you've struggled with celery before, I've been really, really impressed with this variety. Again, it's one called Kelvin. This seems to put up with stress hot, dry weather, once it's established, much better than other varieties. And these are some of the nicest, fattest stalks I've gotten off of any variety that I've grown. 
So what's the takeaway from all of this? First of all, I think for folks that don't have an indoor seed starting setup, don't want one, don't have the space, don't want the mess, for whatever reason, winter sowing can be a good alternative. Something important to keep in mind though is that your regional climate, as well as the seasonal weather, is going to make a big difference in your results. If you live in an area that typically has nice, long, cool, moderate springs, you could probably winter sow just about anything successfully. If you live in an area like Ohio that has very unpredictable, drastic temperature swings, your results are gonna be pretty variable. Had I done this two springs ago, I might have had much better results with everything, but you never really know what you're gonna get when you're starting seeds out in the late winter. Will I be winter sowing my cool season veggies again? Probably not. I have my indoor seed starting set up the way I want it, and I have a system that works really well for me. However, many fans of winter sowing use it primarily for things like native perennials or perennial herbs, things that require periods of vernalization or cold stratification. And I already have a list that I started of plants like that that I wanna try the winter sowing method with next year. I think for that specific purpose, it makes a lot of sense. And I'd love to hear from you. What is the most unusual or out of the box thing that you've ever started successfully using the winter sewing method? Drop a line in the comments below and let me know. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to my channel, Growfully with Jenna. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.